Hi, this is Mike with SnapJunkRemoval.com here to give you another presentation on how to start a junk removal business. In this video we'll cover some of the major tools you'll need to actually remove the junk and get it into your trailer and then get it back out at the landfill or however you dispose of it. Um, so I'll just, all these pictures are pictures of my tools and that are actually things that I carry around all the time. So let's start out with my truck bed here. Um, one of the major things you'll need obviously is a dolly. I recommend getting uh, one of the larger wheel dollies with the rubber wheels. Um, you know, obviously you can use it for like refrigerators, appliances. Uh, you can use it for large tree stumps. It's kind of self-explanatory, so I'll move on. Uh, another thing you'll need is a garden cart, a four-wheel garden cart with a handle. Uh, I pulled up another picture so you can get a better look. Uh, it's it's really important for you to have something like for you to have something like that because when you're going into backyards, uh, you're going to be removing a lot of boards. Um, and those are kind of impossible to put in like a wheelbarrow so you'll you'll need to have some kind of cart and those boards will have nails on them too so you don't want to just pick up a, a bunch of boards and carry them by hand and uh, if you were to carry them by hand which I've done before it will take you forever and ever and ever to remove a lot of stuff from somebody's backyard another thing you can do with these carts is uh, put a big plastic bin on it um, and you know you can fill the bin with construction waste like sheetrock uh, or smaller boards and uh, just use this cart to drag it up to your trailer. Uh, another thing you'll need is a wheelbarrow. It comes in handy a lot uh, especially whenever you're taking waste out of somebody's backyard or somebody's front yard or inside somebody's house. Um, you know you'll have to move tile a lot of times or dirt or just random small items you're gonna to wanna to be able to throw in here and not carry a bunch of handfuls around everywhere with you um, another thing you'll probably want is a uh, appliance dolly I honestly don't use an appliance dolly as much as I used to I prefer to use just this regular dolly um, because the bigger wheels make it easier to get over humps a lot of times when you have a furniture dolly like this, uh, it's very hard to get an item up into your trailer or over a doorstep or any kind of obstacle because these wheels don't allow you to do that. Um, although the, the appliance dollies are nice because they have these uh, straps that allow you to wrap it around the fridge. So if you're removing a fridge or large appliance solo, it makes it easier to tilt the fridge over. Uh, but you can just get a ratchet strap and, and use it with a regular dolly and you should be able to handle it as well. It's just those refrigerators are, are hard to tip sometimes because they can be up to 300 pounds so that becomes a, a little hard to do. Um, another thing you'll probably want just in general in your truck is just a, a toolbox. You can get a used one like this for maybe 135, 140 if you look around a little bit and you'll have some uh, power tools in there which we'll get to later so let me exit out of that picture and uh, we'll get to some other tools loading okay so in this picture you can see a few other items I carry around with me one is uh, a large gray shovel a large plastic head on it um, You'll need this for, for shoveling uh, like household trash, uh, sometimes leaves, any lightweight trash that's uh, not very easy to pick up with your hands. It, it, it's just a lot easier to pick up a large amount of uh, small items that are lightweight with a shovel. Uh, it's, it's good for construction waste in particular too, uh, like if you're in uh, in a building and there's a bunch of uh, rubble on the ground like sheetrock, small boards, um, insulation, you name it, you can use something like this. I don't use this very often, but it really just depends on what type of job you're doing. Um, a little lower you can see a uh, bow rake, I don't know if you can make that out in this picture. 
Uh, your bow rake is going to be more important for unloading your trailer, actually, than, than loading it. Um, whenever you have a bunch of small pieces of construction waste or other trash, uh, your bow rake you can just use to like uh, drag it out of the trailer, kind of like a reverse broom, I guess you could say. And it, it's good for tile in particular. You just slide it on out at the end of your trailer. And that way you don't have to handle everything by hand. It makes it a little bit faster. Um, obviously you'll need a broom if you're doing any kind of cleaning. Um, and you can also use that to clean out the the trailer and uh, scrape all the debris off your uh, expandable metal gates if you have an expandable metal gate on your trailer. I don't think I really need to explain brooms to you. Um, another thing you'll need is a flat nose shovel I don't know if you can kind of make it out in this picture. Um, you'll use that a lot for for tile or dirt or uh, heavier weight items that you may not want to use one of these big plastic head shovels for. You can only lift so much weight and have it be logical with one of these big shovels. So sometimes it's uh, just the way you need to go is just use one of these smaller metal flathead shovels. You don't want one with the, the spade on the end or, or the sharp tip unless you're digging holes. Uh, and then uh, let me uh, exit out of this and I'll get to some other pictures. Here's uh, this next picture is a picture of a, a sawzall. You're definitely going to want to carry around one of these at all times. Uh, you'll encounter a lot of situations where you've got uh, boards that are too long for your trailer or you might want to break down a, uh, a play set or a, a piece of furniture or if you have a dumpster you might want to break down a couch or, so, or something like that to uh, be able to fit everything. There's a million situations where you need a sawzall. Um, also if you're going to remove hot tubs, which you, you definitely should do because that's a good high dollar item, uh, you'll want a sawzall to be able to chop up the hot tub so you don't have to have any fancy dollies or heavy equipment movers. You just uh, chop up the fiberglass and the uh, boards around the outskirts of it <clears throat> into you know manageable pieces that you can pick up from somebody's backyard and, and throw in your trailer. Um, it's important to note that you'll need uh, different uh, types of blades for these things. I don't know how familiar you are with these. Uh, you'll want to get some metal blades which have the, the finer teeth. And you also want to get some wood blades which have the uh, bigger, more, more jagged teeth. And they also have some heavy duty blades that will do both. They're a little bit more expensive. Um, but you'll figure it out as you go. Let's see, and then let's uh, another major item. You're definitely gonna want a large sledgehammer. I don't know if I have a photo of it in here. I kind of do. Get yourself like a like a 30 pound sledgehammer with a with a, a long handle. Maybe not 30 pound. Maybe it's like 25. I can't remember what exactly I have. But a lot of times, what you want to do. Uh, maybe not at the customer's house, it, but you know, before you go to the dump, you'll want to break down uh, large shelves, uh, cabinets, desks, anything made of wood uh, as a means of reducing dump fees because a lot of landfills will charge you based on volume. So if you can reduce that volume, you can save yourself money. Let's say you've got a, a large you know, wooden shelving unit. Um, it might be as much as a cubic yard and you're getting charged ten dollars per cubic yard well you can spend less than five minutes breaking it down into like a you know a, a tenth of a cubic yard and then you just made ten dollars in five minutes catch my drift alright so your dolly your garden cart your wheelbarrow your sledgehammer appliance dolly that's kind of uh, optional You'll want a dustpan. It'll help you clean up a lot of construction waste. And uh, whenever you're done cleaning out people's garages or whatever, it's 
it's a good thing to kind of sweep up afterwards. It impresses them. Sometimes you'll get tips. That's a lot of the major stuff, and then uh, these next few pictures will be somewhat random, uh, especially until I get to talking about trailers, because that's a, a large part of your business. Okay, this is a small furniture dolly. You won't need these as often as you might think, but it is helpful. Um, you know, if you're in somebody's garage and you got something heavy and you need to move it, you know, to your trailer. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just put about whatever you want on here. It's if you're going to use it, you might want to have two or three of these things to put under the edges of of large items. Um, let's talk about your trailers for a second. <clears throat> it's actually kind of important. Whenever you buy a trailer, uh, you you want to consider the fact that you'll be going up into a lot of people's driveways and some of those driveways will have very steep grades on them and if your trailer does not sit high enough you will have a hard time getting up that driveway and you can turn a, uh, a simple job into a nightmare um, if you have to walk all the junk you're removing uh, more than 10 feet or so. Let's say you're at the end of a driveway and it's like 50 foot away or somebody's backyard and it's 100 feet away. You're going to turn a potentially 15 minute job into like a two hour job. So you want to be able to get as close as possible to the sources of junk with your trailer. Pretty obvious, uh, but if somebody didn't tell you that and, and uh, you, you know you got a low boy trailer and you couldn't make it up somebody's driveway, uh, you'd be hurting. So this particular picture is of uh, a jack I custom welded onto my trailer. I put it pretty high uh, so that I wouldn't bump the end of people's driveways. Um, and I actually took out the old one you can see here. In general you want your your trailer to sit like a uh, you know the, the bottom edge of your trailer to sit like a foot and a half off the ground just so you can make it up these steep grades and uh, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll get off that subject for a minute and move on um, here's a little Bluetooth headset I use a lot um, it's nice to be able to talk to people hands-free uh, your vehicle will oftentimes be your little mobile office and you want to be able to write down uh, customers addresses and and schedule times and, and write it in your book or when you're on the job you you're gonna wanna be able to answer other customers phone calls um, but you wanna be able to move junk at the same time and not uh, be disrespectful to the customer you already have so these things help out a lot you just put it around your neck and uh, it'll vibrate when you get a phone call and then you just stick the little earbud in your ear and press a button and you can talk Um, another very important thing you're going to need is uh, or are straps and bungees. So I recommend you have uh, your own little dedicated toolbox just for these. You know, carry around like eight bungees and eight, you know, large ratchet straps. So that's what you see here. That way you can, uh, you know, keep everything from flying out of your trailer and also keep your tarps down. Um, you'll want a back brace if you're smart that way you don't end up with back problems later on in life I don't use these things often as I should but I do use them especially if you're moving around a lot of furniture don't be stupid you know save your back and uh, if you are starting to have your back hurt I recommend uh, going out and buying one of these things even if you just wear it temporarily uh, I've had issues in the past where my back wasn't out but it felt a little sore and I just strapped these things on even when I'm just driving in it and it makes it feel better um, let's see you want to carry around invoices uh, this is my own custom invoice my wife actually has a sign company so she made it for me but uh, feel free to kind of emulate everything that I say on here um, I might even be able to give you a uh, template if you email me 
here's another picture of that you know ratchet strap box make sure your ratchet straps are, are good quality ones uh, you're going to be using them all the time and uh, make sure they're pretty long sometimes you get weird items in your trailer that are uh, kinda hard to strap down without having something long uh, that's kinda non-specific but sorry you'll see what I mean here's a tarp uh, I like to keep in my little trailer cage uh, make sure you get a heavy duty tarp uh, if you buy one of the cheap ones uh, you're just wasting your time as much as you'll be using these things uh, it's gonna rip uh, it's gonna come into contact with sharp edges uh, nails uh, it's gonna get blown around by the wind uh, the cheap ones the the rivets on them uh, don't hold if you put any kind of pressure on them so get a heavy duty one spend that extra money otherwise you're just throwing your money away um, you want it long enough to drape, drape over the edges of your trailer you know on all sides by a foot or two just keep that in mind another thing you can do is get old vinyl signs uh, that were used for like large billboards if you can source that put grommets in it and that makes a pretty heavy duty tarp like you know three mil something like that kinda hard to break um, here's a picture of a tire with a nail in it that's gonna happen to you all the time so what are you gonna need to do you need gonna need to get a, a tire plug set it's a little tool that you uh, once you get the nail out with a set of pliers uh, you stick in this almost drill looking piece and and uh, kind of make that hole a little bit more uh, uh, what's the word for it defined and then you have another tool where you push in the plug and seal it up and then you air your tire back up uh, if you don't have a tire plug set you're gonna be spending a whole 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 lot of money on tires it's just unavoidable that you're gonna go to the landfill and you're gonna run over some nails uh, it's just the way it goes so whenever you buy tires definitely get a uh, a deal with a, a warranty a road hazard warranty and uh, abuse it you know you can get your tires replaced for for free or for like 20 bucks like I think from discount tire anyway I'll, I'll move on from that and it doesn't matter if they're 10 ply or not I mean they're gonna get punctured whenever you go buy tires uh, don't get passenger tires on your trailer get the the real deal and it'll still have problems Let's see here. What else we got? All right, here's another picture of one of my trailers. Uh, again, remember you don't want a low boy unless you're doing some uh, kind of scrap metal stuff at a, at a warehouse. I mean, you're just going to need to be able to have that back end off the ground quite a bit. Um, whenever you buy a trailer, I would recommend getting expanded metal trailer. Uh, they're usually a little bit heavier duty and won't be pushed out on the sides and all these expanded metal pieces allow you to uh, strap things over in your trailer even if it's not completely full otherwise you're reduced to just strapping things over the very top but these expanded metal gates and stuff you can put uh, the hooks right through um, another thing you need to consider is when you're buying a trailer uh, get a double axle trailer if you can you're gonna be moving some serious weight uh, most trailers come with uh, like 3500 pound axles unless they're uh, you know higher end more expensive ones you know they have 5000 pound axles uh, 7000 pound axles but this is like uh, two 3500 pound axles so I can carry 7,000 pounds with this trailer, but the trailer itself weighs about 2,000 pounds. So I can carry actually about 5,000 pounds of cargo. You can overload it a little bit more than that, but just be careful. And also, you need to consider uh, the truck that you have. But uh, yeah, going back to the single axle, double axle thing, if you only have a single axle trailer, uh, you're, you're probably going to have a smaller trailer. And uh, you're going to run into weight problems like uh, let's say for instance uh, you have uh, two cubic yards of dirt or two cubic yards of concrete 
or two cubic yards of a rock or two cubic yards of uh, shingles, uh, you're looking at uh, about 2,000 pounds per cubic yard for any of those kind of heavy materials or heavier. Uh, so two cubic yards could put this thing up to 4,000 pounds, which is almost, you know, almost to its weight limit. But this is a 16-yard trailer, and so you're gonna feel kind of stupid going out to to remove two yards of you know debris, and then reaching your weight limit. So at least get a double axle trailer. I have a single axle trailer. Don't get me wrong, but that's you know what I started out with. Another significant significant thing you you really need to consider is the truck that you're operating. Um, not all trucks are created equal. You need a F-250 or F-350 or a Chevy 2500 or 3500 or bigger or you know a Dodge 2500 or, or bigger. Uh, if, you, if you try to use a 1500 you know or F-150 um, I think you're only supposed to haul around maybe 6,000 pounds with those uh, GVWR gross vehicle weight. Um, so let's say I have a 2,000 pound trailer and then uh, I have, you know, four or five thousand pounds of stuff. You know, I would be at my weight limit, pushing it to the max with the F-150. Um, but you know, I have this particular truck is a 2500. I think I can haul just about up to 9,000 uh, GVRW. Wait a minute, I'm doing those calculations wrong. Okay, you need to consider the weight of your truck. So I can haul, haul nine or ten thousand pounds total vehicle weight plus trailer weight plus whatever's in the trailer so this is a 5,000 pound truck 2,000 pound trailer that's already 7,000 pounds uh, so if I load it up with 5,000 pounds of stuff well I'm actually over you know the the vehicle weight I'm supposed to be using with this truck so with an F-150 you'd be way over you know what I mean 500 plus 2,000 is, is 7,000 and you load anything in your trailer well then you're, you're having problems if you can you know get a get a 3500 which is a 13,000 pound rating I believe and you won't really have to worry too much about weight restrictions and also uh, if you can get a dually by all means get a dually uh, if you can afford a dump trailer you're, you're gonna need a, uh, a dually probably to make it worth your while I'll talk more about that in a second uh, here's a circular saw. Uh, a lot of times you'll be removing decks from people's backyard or you know boards. Uh, you can do some some demolition jobs as well whenever you get into this junk removal stuff. So you're going to want to be able to cut those boards. A, a sawzall will take forever if you have a significant amount of boards to cut. So uh, use a circular saw. Uh, you won't need this very often. You could probably keep this at home. Uh, and just uh, bring it out when it's time to you know do a deck job uh, here's another little saw uh, I don't always like to use my you know I've got a battery powered sawzall but sometimes you run out of batteries just I carry around one of these things in case I have some branches uh, that I need to kind of condense a little bit that I'm re removing for somebody you don't absolutely need this but you gotta have some kind of cutting tool uh, here's more bow rakes and here's picture of my sledgehammer that's one of the tools you'll use like every day so you definitely need a sledgehammer gloves you're gonna use a lot of gloves buy a bunch of gloves um, you know you have your regular garden gloves which are the cloth ones uh, those are good but I recommend actually getting one of these kind of like a uh, latex coated slash cloth gloves they will keep you from getting splinters or poked but more importantly or just as importantly uh, they l let you they give you the ability to retain your grip on items so if you're removing furniture or you know couches desks out of somebody's house uh, you can still grab onto it those cloth garden gloves uh, they're hard to get a good grip and you can't feel stuff as good with your fingers and also with these type of gloves you can actually still use your smartphone you know your iPhone or whatever uh, it can still feel the heat from your finger to be able to operate the uh, touch screen. So get these kind of gloves. Uh, it's just another picture of my trailer. Uh, 
you might notice that I have got wires going up and down the sides of this steel uh, as opposed to under it. The reason for that is when you go to landfill you're going to have a bunch of things scraping underneath your trailer um, and it's going to rip the wires off. So do something funky and uh, get it above the ground and not underneath your trailer unless you're going to run some PVC pipe underneath that trailer to protect your lights. Uh, here's a, another important point you need to consider is uh, on your on your dollies if you're feeling froggy but at least on your wheelbarrow uh, you want solid rubber tires don't just get the regular uh, blow up kind what's gonna happen is you're gonna run over a nail at somebody's house and uh, you're gonna be stuck with a flat wheelbarrow trying to haul a bunch of uh, you know tile or boards around with it and uh, that'll make your life a lot harder so just get a solid rubber tire this one costs like about twenty seven dollars but it's worth it otherwise you're just going to end up with a flat tire um, you'll need some trash cans I don't use trash cans as often you know, usually I just use a cart or a wheelbarrow but if you're doing like a whole home clean out uh, where there's a bunch of household trash uh, just strewn everywhere indoors uh, you're going to want to have a big trash can on wheels or a few rather so you can just load things up and you know not back it up not bag it up in, in plastic bags because that takes a long time and also garages you know this becomes useful okay uh, also you're going to want to carry around just a a general basic tool bag. Uh, you don't want to. You want to have some crescent wrenches, some sockets, some pliers, um, some safety glasses, and uh, you know some screwdrivers, and maybe an electrical tester or two. Uh, you know you're going to be taking appliances off from connections in people's houses, or you're going to be cutting wires. Let's say if you remove a hot tub, there's all kinds of situations you'll encounter where you need general purpose tools. Um, definitely want some kind of safety glasses or sunglasses when you're removing this stuff. You'll get uh, dirt in your eye pretty quick or if you smash something with a sledgehammer you know debris will fly up so I'm always wearing glasses when I'm doing a junk removal job. Uh, here's a screwdriver you know you probably want to carry around some kind of screwdriver uh, sometimes you gotta dis disassemble uh, furniture type items or other objects so bring a drill sometimes you need to you know poke a hole in something to get it you know drained here's another picture of that sledgehammer uh, bring a pry bar it's more for disassembly kind of work here's a safety vest um, the reason I carry around this thing is a lot of the landfills want you to wear a safety vest so you don't get run over by big dump trucks when you go there. Not all of them require it, but uh, just depending on your local regulations, you might need one. Uh, here's a little uh, razor set. Um, you usually won't need a razor, but uh, this is mostly used for carpet removal. Uh, you can make some good money removing carpet, so you'll need this to just cut it up to get it out of the house so consider carrying that around you may not be able to tell it from the picture but these are forearm forklifts uh, these are very useful uh, you know when you're removing large furniture items from people's houses especially if it's upstairs and or there's a lot of uh, you know level changes in somebody's house you might want to use these things honestly I don't use them that often but uh, it just depends on the situation you get to get into or or if you're going to do moving help on the side every once in a while you'll, you'll definitely want some of these here's just another picture of my dolly get a heavy duty one with large tires um, here's some garbage bags you always want to carry around some garbage bags you never know whenever you're going to be in someone's house and uh, it might just be more convenient to throw it in a garbage bag than uh, in a trash can. Uh, you don't always want to carry around your trash can either, so 
Uh, in particular, if you're in somebody's house upstairs and they have a bunch of uh, household trash everywhere, um, like uh, for a, a tenant eviction cleanout, uh, you might need to bag the stuff up to get it downstairs. You can't always just carry a trash can downstairs. Uh, here's my little dump trailer. Uh, I've kind of built higher size on it. Um, if you can afford it, it's nice to get a dump trailer. Uh, it's just got a hydraulic unit on it to where it uh, lifts up the front of it and, and dumps everything out. If you don't have one of these, what you're going to end up doing is unloading everything at the landfill by hand and uh, that takes a long time. Alternatively you can get uh, what's called a pull-off at the landfill where you put a, a pallet or a tire at the front of your trailer that's attached to a chain and they tie that chain to a bulldozer and it just drags all the trash out but you have to pay for uh, pull-offs and a lot of landfills will charge between like twenty and forty dollars to do that pull off so if uh, you've got more time than you do money a lot of times it's actually smarter just to unload things by hand you know it'll take you less than an hour to unload just about any trailer so you're making about between twenty and forty dollars per hour if you just do it by hand but the other alternative like I said is is to get a dump trailer this particular dump trailer if you were to buy it new it would probably cost about five thousand dollars and it's only a ten foot by six foot trailer and I had to weld on these high sides um, these trailers are often very heavy uh, so for this small one it's about two thousand pounds which is not a big deal for me to haul with my truck but if you were gonna get a uh, larger trailer it's uh, you know more worth your while like a, a 16 cubic yard trailer it's like you know 14 foot long by six or seven foot wide with uh, like three foot high sides um, that's gonna be like a uh, 3500 pound trailer I'm just estimating and then uh, you know if you load that up with junk it gets really heavy real fast so you're gonna want a Chevy 3500 or or you know a dually to be able to haul around a uh, a double axle dump trailer they're very heavy duty especially if, if you use it for uh, construction waste which is really what it's intended for for furniture type items you don't really need a dump trailer but if you're moving around a lot of concrete or tile um, your weight is gonna go up real fast which on a side note you know I don't really like removing uh, doing tile or dirt jobs or concrete jobs uh, the reason being is I don't have a uh, little skid steer or a front loader and so if you if you start loading that kind of material by hand or wheelbar or, or whatever uh, you know you're moving uh, you know 2,000 pounds per cubic yard and uh, it's just not uh, logical to do that by hand a lot of times and if you're moving concrete or tile or heavy items like that you need to charge more for it uh, we can get into detail about that some of the time. Uh, and uh, I think that's about all I can cover as far as the major tools. Um, I'm, hope, I'm hoping you enjoyed this video, uh, kind of give you some more insight about what you need. Uh, I thought I took a photo of it, but definitely get yourself a battery powered like DeWalt. Um, Sawzall uh, slash drill set they come in handy a lot other than that I think I covered just about all the major tools you'll use on a regular basis so anyway I'm Mike with snapjunkremoval.com thanks for watching uh, you know go visit my website uh, like my videos if you want to help me out I'm trying to help you out and uh, thanks for watching alright